Yes guys, how you doing? Andy Carter here. Welcome back to the channel. And as nice as that view is, we need to talk balance. So I'm going to head over to the golf club. I'm going to head over to Elle's Golf Club today. And we're going to be talking about balance. Stay tuned. Oh, such a good view though. There's a guy down there with a beer. Right, balance. We're going to do balance. We'll do balance. And just like that, I'm on the 14th hole here at the Elves Club in Dubai. So many golfers say to me, Andy, I struggle to hold my balance after I've hit my shot. And they wonder if it's maybe a, a physiological problem that they can't like physically hold the balance or they're not strong enough in the core or anything to hold the balance. But actually, it generally comes from a fault in the golf swing. So, for example, if I swing a golf club and I drop it inside, and I hit the ball with a bit of a, a bit of a hook or a bit of a push or something like that, golfers often fall to the heels, okay? If I swing it, as I've already mentioned, more from the outside, they must fall towards the toes. So the balance is generally a direct consequence of what's gone before it. The balance isn't necessarily an issue, it's what's caused the loss of balance. So the issue will generally be swing path movement. And the most common one is the weight fall into the toes because the most common swing fault for golfers is this right shoulder or the right side of the chest or and or the arms extending away from the body as they hit the transition on the downswing. So as we hit the transition, the club's outside, it's outside of the line. We all know that's an outside path. So now, if you think about the path that golf club needs to take to the ball to hit towards the target, it's going to be moving into the body, okay? So my body now has got to extend up and get out of the way and get up onto the tiptoes. You very, very rarely see a golfer swinging it from out to in and have really good body rotation. I very, very rarely see it. And the ones that do just hit the ball with a huge pull towards the left-hand side. And actually, it's one of those things. After a while of doing that, you're, in, you're instinctively going to stop moving the body so you can square the face a little bit more and hit the fade into the target. So a lot of golfers will get on the outside, slow the lower body down with the rotation, and get themselves up onto the tiptoes before they hit a shot. So very, very important for you to be able to identify whether you get too much to your toes or too much to your heels. And I would almost, almost, guarantee that there's a swing fault problem in terms of the path okay so what we're going to try and feel is that the club drops down into position and then you can start to rotate so the very first movement is the pat the transition so i want to try and feel go one handed if you're a right-handed golfer grab the club on the shaft just below the grip once you get to the top we need to start to feel this motion here getting the club parallel to the feet once the club's parallel to the feet, you can then start to rotate. So loss of balance will generally come from a poor swing path, okay? So up to the top. Decent follow through. Probably should have actually aimed where I was going because I missed the green well left. <laughs> so aim as well. Aim's important, but we're not talking about aim. We're talking about balance. For me personally, I often lose my balance a little bit to my heels just because I drop it on the inside into my transition. My lower body then gets out of the way and it gets onto that left heel and I just start to lose my balance a little bit more so when I'm trying to hit the ball harder. And that is another issue. You, the harder you try and hit the golf ball, the harder the balance is going to be to maintain, which is a, a natural thing, isn't it? Anytime you try and do something fast or powerful, it's going to be hard to hold your balance. It's like gymnastics. When they spin off those rings, you can't always hold your balance. This is nothing like gymnastics. I don't even know why I said that. Right, so if you, even if you wanted to hit the ball from out to in, you've got the club out here. Now just try and focus on rotating from the outside here. So you've got the slight swing path on the outside a little bit and get that rotation around that left heel. Get the hips out to the target. So you get that, oh my God, that is absolutely sensational. Get that, sorry, had a moment there by myself. Even the golfers that are swinging it from out to in, you've got to force that lower body rotation. Now, once you're forcing that lower body rotation, as I mentioned before, you're likely to pull the ball to the left-hand side if you square the face to the path. So if you put the club face to the left of the target, the ball will most probably pull to the left of the target. So you've got to learn that that left hip's going to open up, it's going to rotate, so you've got to be able to control the club face. Make sure the club face doesn't rotate too much to the left 
and then just like that last shot I demonstrated, you'll be able to hit a little fade. So use the balance to understand what you're to understand your golf swing. That should hopefully for those that are struggling with balance, start to put the pieces together as to how your golf swing looks before you've got to the point of issue, which is the balance, okay? So there's a reason you do what you do. There's a reason you lose the balance. We have to figure out that reason, then we can improve the shots. That, my friends, was inside and on my heels, okay? And as a result, rubbish and fat, okay? But the second shot was good, so one out of three is pretty good, right? We'll take it. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this tip. Massively important for those that struggle with balance, not to worry about the balance in, in particular, worry about what's causing the loss of balance. Identify what part of your feet you're falling to, whether you're falling closer toward, towards where the ball was, or you're falling away from where the ball was. That will help you determine your swing path faults. As will the ball flight, anyway, the ball flight will also help you determine it. So you can't really hit bad ball flights with good balance. It makes sense, right? If you hit a really nice ball flight, you're generally going to hold your balance because your movements have been quite quite good. You hit a big slice, you're probably going to lose your balance. You hit a big hook, just like I did, or a fat hook, you're probably going to lose your balance. So identifying the reasoning for losing your balance is the key, okay? Not necessarily the actual balance. I hope that makes sense. Please do comment below. Is this something you struggle with? I hope this tip has managed to help you out and you understand a little bit more about those issues. If so, pop a like in there. Also, if you're new to the channel as well, please follow me on social media platforms. Like, subscribe to this video and channel and also Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. But from what a day. Like this is, this the weather's just, it's just a million times better than a couple of weeks. I can't even begin to explain it. But anyway, enough about this. See you in the next video. I've got some corkers coming. Now it's time for a beer.